Our first speaker today is going to be Sergeant First Class Will Rainier. Sergeant Rainier is currently the Public Affairs Advisor to the Sergeant Major of the Army. Some of Sergeant Rainier's past experience prior to this current position includes uh, being Chief of Communication for Army's Futures, Futures Command, as well as building social media campaigns to counter ISIS propaganda and foreign influencer misinformation campaigns. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant First Class Rainier. Morning, quick mic check. Is that coming through? Did I get that? Maybe? Let me click. As it's on, yeah. maybe there. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's great to be here. I do just up front, I am actually, uh, as of a few weeks ago, no longer the uh, Sergeant Major of the Army's Public Affairs uh, Advisor. So SMA Grinston retired on August 4th, and now it's a Sergeant Major of the Army, Michael Weimer. Uh, and so we kind of use that as an opportunity to transition public affairs advisors so that, um, you know, I, new SMA Weimer could uh, select his public affairs advisor, kind of find somebody that matches the, the voice and the tone. And that really is an important piece when you're looking at partnering with a, a senior leader, um, especially in that type of role, having somebody that you can build a good relationship and build that trust with. Um, so first of all, thank you on the first presentation. So hopefully you get a long time to forget about this one and then you can invite me back to your corporate functions, your unit training, bar mitzvahs, weddings, whatever you like. Um, thank you, Colonel McNorton, for uh, hosting this, for inviting me. Uh, Kwane Hall for asking me to come or giving me the opportunity to speak and uh, Lieutenant Commander Smith for helping me get to this point. Um, so I am Sergeant First Class Will Rainier and, and uh, I want you all, real quick, to just put both your feet on the floor. Just take a breath. Everybody in this room right now is thinking one of two things, either something that is going to happen or something that has already happened. All right, and it, what happens when you do that is it prevents you from being in the moment. So everyone just take a big breath, let your body get real big. And all those things that are pressing on you, you feel them pressing on you. Now, when you exhale, your body gets a little smaller and it gives you a little bit of space between all those things that are pressing against you. Um, every day, do something like that, please. Uh, social media is a terrible, terrible place. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, so find some time every day to do something like that, please. But that's just uh, for your own mental health. Uh, how many of y'all have been in this situation? Since 2008, every commander and every leader, we need a Facebook. How, how simple would it be to just smash that easy button and be like, yep, we started a Facebook boss and we're posting. We're posting this. I posted a picture of that. I got, we got a TikTok. We got a Threads. We got a Blue Sky. Whatever it is, you can replace that noun with anything you want. Um, it's so much better. I think we all know this. I hope everyone in this room knows this. Um, to take a second and think about what do you actually want to achieve? What do you want to get out of it? What is our goal? What is the intent? And then how do we put that in action? So how do we operationalize a senior leader's intent? So just for purposes of this discussion, let's get on common terminal, uh, terminology. Um, the word operationalize, we're going to, in this conversation, say that we're turning an abstract concept into something uh, measurable actions. So some big idea that somebody has, how do we actually translate that into things that you can do and see? Uh, for the intent, let's call that uh, a statement of purpose that describes a future end state. Where do we want to get to? Okay, you're standing here. You want to get across whatever environment you're in, and uh, here's the tools you have to build that bridge. How are you going to build that bridge and get yourself over there? Uh, can you have more than one intent? Of course. Yes. You can have your operational intent. You can have something, some intent for training. Uh, some intent for your family and readiness program. You can have your commander, your senior leader can have an intent on any number of things. Uh, what I will caution you though, you have to prioritize. You can't do it. You can do anything. You can't do everything. Okay. And time is finite. Uh, I think all of us have probably spent multiple hours after work at home, just doom scrolling, trying to like follow on like something that's happening on social media or something we posted. What are they saying about it? Do they love me? They don't. That's OK. So we'll talk about this. I've oversimplified this conversation just for purposes of it. Uh, we're going to, in a few easy steps, uh, articulate that intent. You have to be very clear 
You have to be very concise and very direct on what it is that you're trying to achieve. Find your audience. You got to know who it is that's going to carry you to the promised land. And then repetitive engagement. And then repetitive engagement. And then deja vu. No, assess the effect. So let's uh, kind of work through these. Uh, and we'll, I'll use my own um, experience uh, with the sergeant, uh, my time with uh, Sergeant Major of the Army, Grinston. OK? This is my squad. Sergeant Major of the Army came in. They said, you're the new Sergeant Major of the Army. What are you going to do? What's your big thing? What's your, what's your vision? And uh, the previous Sergeant Major of the Army had not in my squad. These are the things we're not going to do. We're not going to, uh, we're not going to degrade each other. We're not going to harass each other. We're not going to assault each other. Uh, we're not going to tear each other down to the point where somebody loses hope and uh, considers suicide as an option. These are the things we're not going to do. The new SMA comes in and he goes, yeah, but why don't we focus on the things we are going to do? What are those positive aspects of leadership? The things of having pride in your organization, taking ownership of your people. You want to say, this is my squad, and not just that infantry squad. Any group of small people that you work with, you can have more than one. My favorite squad is my family. My five-year-old daughter just started kindergarten, and that was important to our squad. So Monday morning, uh, I was outside at the bus stop. Sunday night, we're out there with sidewalk chalk, chalking up the bus stop so that when she walks in, she has a positive experience. And the same thing applies to any organization. How do you bring people in? How do you take ownership of the responsibilities you've been given? How do you create an environment where it's a place they want to be, uh, and then you'll get the, the best work out? So for Sergeant Major of the Army Grinson, this uh, went through many different iterations. But this is what we landed on. This was it. This was, this was the, the gospel. This was the book answer. What is this as my squad? It's why, why am I doing that? Is that my fault? How about now? I'm getting really excited. You can tell I'm starting to amp up a little bit. So I'll bring it down. Create that space. OK. Engage leaders who build. Oh, I don't have to talk near as loud. Engage leaders who build cohesive teams that are highly trained, disciplined, and fit. Uh, who here is the leader of a public affairs uh, office? Who is the, the PA in the back? How would you define a trained public affairs specialist? Just something that would say, yep, that person is trained. I know my material. I know what I want. I am trained. How do we define highly trained? What's that next step? What is that? How would, how would you define highly trained? You're a lieutenant. You are going to lead airmen and uh, air soldiers. How do you define? What is that different? I would, say, I would say they're trained to the point where they can do it independently. They can do it independently. I woke up and I put my shoes on independently. I am highly trained. Is that highly trained? I could do it independently. I've sent soldiers out. They didn't come back with very good product. They did it independently. It wasn't very good. I saw a hand. Highly trained. In the back. Looking at the future. Okay. Ready for I'm looking at lunch. <laughs> I am highly trained, everybody. No, and this is so this is a good, right? This is a good exercise. You have to articulate this. You have to clearly articulate this um, and explain this to your people. What is highly trained? Is it coming back to Dinfos for an, ex in a, an advanced class? Does that make someone highly trained? Yeah, probably. It's part of a piece of it. Um, you know, can they go out and cover an event and come back and turn photos and cut lines and have them approved and have them posted in an hour? That'd be pretty nice, right? I mean, how many times is your commander like, hey, where's those photos at? Hey, where, it's like three days. Where are those photos at? And you're like texting your soldier, hey, where are those photos at? Where's that story? Like you've been working on this for a week, right? So how do you I, how do you take this and apply it to your organization and uh, and tell your people what does it mean? Here's how we're going to be cohesive team. Here's what we're going to do. Here's a highly trained, disciplined, and fit. And here's what that means for our organization. And fit's not just physical fitness. It's your mental fitness. That's why we did a breathing exercise. It's your social fitness. That's why I met with um, Specialist Pittman and Kira. Um, Specialist Pittman is a former 12 Bravo.
or she's a current 12, I was a 12 Bravo when I came in the Army, reclassing to public affairs, so we got one. Um, build that social fitness, how do you talk to people, and then your, you know, every other aspect of uh, H2F is great, holistic health and fitness in the Army, it's your spiritual uh, sleep, nutrition, and of course physical is a piece of that as well. So this is it, this was our, this was my senior leader's intent. I could write it down in one sentence. Developed engaged leaders who build cohesive teams that are highly trained, disciplined, and mentally, socially, and physically fit. And if you get to the point where you can say it just like that, that's a great first step. That is the first step. So now you know what we want to do. Who's going to carry us to the promised land? You got to find them. You got to know your people. Who are we talking to? For us, it was those leaders of those small teams. In the Army, typically, that's a staff sergeant, a squad leader, the overwhelming majority. So that's, that was where we focused a lot of our attention on. Who is going to actually do that? Who is going to do the action that gets you to the intent? Uh, and then who are their influencers? Who are they listening to? Um, you know, why are they or aren't they doing whatever it is you need them to do right now? Um, where do they consume their information? Where are they spending their time? Uh, you know, who has that sway when somebody says something, they immediately believe it, or they know that it's not, it's not true and they go the other way. And then what messages are going to resonate best with that audience? So this kind of helps you start to figure out, okay, we know where we want to go, we know who's going to take us there, and we know where they are now, and we know what we need to find, we know what we need to say, and we know what uh, we're trying to get from them. So go see what they think. And I'm going to tell you real quick, in the beginning it wasn't good. It was not good. I told you social media is a terrible place. You've got this meme over here, thank you, not you, for all you either. The inspiration and leadership, definitely not you. Definitely not you. That's my guy right there, by the way. That's the Sergeant Major of the Army. Definitely not you uh, for all these years. And then you've got the ones who are you know, endowed to, you know, this is the, the previous Sergeant Major of the Army. So this is the one that came for Like, this is where my audience was. I knew where I wanted them to go. And I knew where they were at now. How do I get there? Engage. You gotta go find them. You gotta talk to them. You can't be scared of them. And you gotta find them. You gotta find them where they are. You gotta talk to them, you know, in the way that they talk. Uh, find the people who they listen to. Um, and you have to be authentic. And you have to not turn off the screen. Um, and you have to be willing to do it a little bit differently, right? So um, there's kind of this candy vegetable uh, example that I like to use. You, you find the, the candy, you know, maybe like the, the meme, you know, we partnered with Veteran with a sign on Instagram uh, and took a, you know, I'll never block you, and that was the sign that we held up um, just because, you know, we we're seeing a lot of people get very upset about uh, Army leaders being uh, blocking and not engaging. So, you know, we wanted to say, hey, we're, we're going to do it a little bit differently, and we partnered with somebody who kind of works in that same space. So 9,200 likes on, on that Instagram post. Um, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, so that's the, the candy, and then we got the vegetables. So up in the top, the Fort Hood report, right? The, the, uh, the report, the independent report that the Secretary of the Army uh, independently commissioned um, after Vanessa Gain at Fort Hood, something we wanted people to read. So, you know, that's the vegetables. Um, that's important stuff. That's real people's lives. Um, but you don't just serve up, hey, everybody, read, go read the report. You know, make sure everyone's reading this. You know, you find a way. We kind of capitalized on a, a meme format. You, Good morning to everyone except Army leaders who haven't read the report. And, um, you know, kind of blending this, how do I deliver these messages in a way that resonates with the audience to get some effect? And then, you know, go and, and ask. You know, ask people, hey, tell me what you think. Tell me what you see wrong. What do you want to do differently? What are your questions? Um, and then be present in that space. And I found it so simple. Two words on Reddit. DM me. That's all it took. This is, this is my, our most liked Reddit comment in the last three years. Uh, this individual, and look at these awards. It's crazy. This individual, uh, you know, we always talk about social media as like this digital smoke pit or the digital water cooler, right? Um, your people are there, they're talking. As a leader, I know that the Sergeant Major of the Army, I know how he talks, I know how he talks to soldiers, I know how he responds to issues, 
I know how he answers questions. Um, and so when a soldier is at that digital water cooler, digital smoke pit, saying, I got a $630,000 TRICARE bill in the mail, dual military couple, child was born, had to be life flighted to Raleigh, spent months in the NICU, got transferred to three different hospitals. At the end of all of that, TRICARE says, here's a bill for $630,000. Sorry, not TRICARE, the, uh, the hospital. Sends a bill to the soldiers and says, $630,000, please, will that be cash or, cash or card? OK, when that happens, it doesn't take a lot. Hey, DM me. I want to hear more about that. Tell me, if you're standing next to people and they have a problem like that and you're a leader, you don't go, wow, that stinks. I got to get to work. No, you go, hey, why don't you tell me more about that? Tell me what you're, tell me what is going on with that. And it really can be that simple. Um, on Twitter, that version of that was a go on. And so somebody said, you know, I, I love this as my squad. I love the time that we get to get to know our people. But, you know, it's really interesting when leaders aren't present for that. Oh, go on. Tell me more about that. You know, I'm not making judgment. Just I want some more information. Let's see where we can engage here. All right. It comes with a lot of risk. And I had a little bit of an epiphany this morning. I put <laughs> risk on the slide. I couldn't change it. But really, it, it comes with trust. It's you and your senior leader. Do they have the trust? Are they underwriting that risk? How much risk are they willing to underwrite? But the flip side of that is, how much of that risk are you willing to take? Because you know, maybe your leader is willing to underwrite a lot more risk than you're willing to give them credit for, that you're willing to assume yourself. So sometimes you get bad headlines in Fox News. Sometimes you put up a meme uh, that kind of pokes at a sitting senator. Sometimes you say things like, you know, again, remember, DM me. That would have been fine, right? Uh, I can work faster than a congressional, which is actually true. And he would say that. I know he would, because he said it before. Um, but that, that comes with risk. He took risk kind of giving me the keys to that. I take risk knowing, hey, I know how he talks. I know how he engages. I know what he's would say if a soldier came up and said, I'm having this issue. You know, this one, they haven't gotten their BAH since April 2020. I think this one was over like 13 months where they hadn't gotten their allowance for housing. And they lived at JBLM, and they were junior enlisted. And this was uh, an NCO who's like, I've done everything I can, and my soldier's just not getting paid. Um, they said, hey. They're like, you know, everyone's saying, file a congressional, right? That's like the big you know, reply on social media. Hey, call your congressman. Hey, or why don't you talk to me? You know I'm here in this space. You know I'm present. Talk to me, because I'm here. Tell me what's going on. I can fix this faster. And we did. We fixed that in under a week. This soldier got all their back pay. And, and here's where the key is, right? We could have just fixed it and walked away. We didn't. We fixed it. We had a phone call with the NCO, and, and by the end of the day, that soldier had a, an appointment with a financial counselor, because they were about to get like $20,000 in one paycheck. And we're like, as much as I, that we got to give them their money, can we not just hand a, a specialist $20,000 and say good luck? Uh, so we got them some financial counseling to go with it, and you know, it, it helped us to see that there were some other issues going on in the post. So risk is on here, but really it's trust. Do you trust your people? to operationalize that intent? Does your leader trust you enough? Are you actually using the trust that you've been granted uh, to get effects? And so that takes us to how do we assess these things? Um, these are some headlines from the last year. Uh, very official military business happening on Reddit. Uh, we, we intervened, and I've personally intervened um, on uh, at least six uh, suicidal incidents. So this is multiple times I'm on the phone with somebody at 1 in the morning saying, I don't care that your platoon sergeant told you not to go to the hospital. Go to the hospital. Like, I can't help you from where you're at. Like, you need to talk to somebody. I'm going to stay on the phone with you until you're at the front desk. And the person on the other line, on the other side at the desk says, yep, we got him. Um, you know, defending soldiers online. You know, we're doing things. Someone says, hey, I'll reenlist if the chief of staff of the Army will reenlist me. And I go, well, how about the vice? Because he's got kind of selected. Is that OK? And they're like, well, yeah, I guess I'll take the vice chief of staff of the Army to reenlist me. So all right, where are you at? We're at Fort Sill. Well, it just so happens we'll be at Fort Sill in three weeks. Are you eligible to reenlist? And they go, no, I'm not. And I go, well, let's figure this out. 
So we figured out how to uh, make them, get them inside their eligibility window by uh, transferring their education benefits they had to extend. So now they're eligible to re-enlist and they do their in-depth re-enlistment with the Vice Chief of Staff with the Sergeant of the Army holding the flag for them. All right, so this is, these are really cool things. They're making a, an impact. Uh, we are building these cohesive teams. Um, we are kind of improving the culture of this organization. And even if it is at a macro or a micro level, you know, I kind of believe that you know, that whole, you can't help the million and, unless you can help the one. Uh, and so that was kind of the, hey, this is my little space of the internet. I'm going to take ownership of it. I'm going to have pride in it. And we're going we're gonna to work through these things um, that, you know, that we see. Probably my favorite headline, uh, Sergeant Major of the Army's um, career. Uh, I think we've all kind of dealt with some version of that, uh, you know, the woke narrative, the your, your organization, fill in the blank, is not as good as it was. Um, so my, you know, I think this is winning when we're talking about, you know, how do we uh, counter a, uh, how do we address a counter narrative? You know, hey, let's just bring people in, let's talk to them and, and hear what they think and then let's show them all these things that we're doing that just makes their claim objectively false. And this was the headline that came out of it. You know, the quiet war to help the army become more lethal, wokeness, hysterics be damned. That was one of those spike the ball in the end zone moments for me. If you get it right, and this is where I'll leave you with, if you get it right, you end up with a quote like this. This is from Todd South. Uh, a couple weeks ago, his article, The Man Who Changed What It Means to Be the Sergeant Major of the Army, uh, talking about an engagement he had with some brand new soldiers. They got their digital memory from the smartphone, the smartphone snap. They also pressed flesh with the real thing. Very little defines the two. It's a direct quote. Um, I think as a public affairs practitioner, as somebody who loves what I do in this space, um, that's probably the highest compliment you could give to any one of us, right? When somebody is saying, hey, the person they, this, this leader, this organization, whatever it is they say they want to do and what they look like they want to do and what they're actually doing, when very little defines that, um, that was uh, kind of that stick the landing moment. Uh, for my for this assignment, and so someone keeps asking me like, you know, how are you doing? I'm actually doing really good. Like I feel sometimes you leave an organization or assignment before you're like ready. I was ready, <laughs> I was definitely ready. And so stuff like this helps me to kind of see, all right, maybe we were getting it right along the way. So again, like I said, a very oversimplified uh, kind of way to have this conversation. Articulate your intent, know your audience. You got to know where they stand on it. Engage and assess. And if you know somebody, we, the assessment piece, that qualitative versus quantitative is like the eternal question, right? How do you know? Uh, sometimes you just know. Sometimes you get something like this. You'll see your, you'll definitely see your uh, quantitative engagement numbers increase, um, but you also kind of just start to sense that culture change, and, and it's indicated by quotes like this. So that's where I want to kind of pause right there. I think we have about 25 minutes for conversation. I, I didn't want to talk this long. Um, I had a timer on my watch, and I blew through it twice. Um, so I really, really appreciate um, just any conversation, any questions, anything. We can talk specific things. We can talk big things, whatever you want. And I'm stalling. And I see a hand. Emily, thank you for throwing me a life raft. Um, I think we have the microphones for the people on the live stream. Morning. Nope. Yes. Nope. Hello. You want me to just shout? What? Um... <laughs> okay. No, I think it was just picking up in your mic. I'll just be loud. What resources did you use to conduct social listening? To find things on LinkedIn? What resources did you use to conduct social listening to find things across all social media platforms? Because obviously you're busy. So how did you find the time to kind of narrow down and find those posts that where you wanted to influence? By the way, that technique, you couldn't have done that technique in 2021. Nobody would have, that would not have flown. Uh, what, what tools did I use to uh, conduct social listening? My alarm's going off again. I hate to say it. I wish I could tell you I was leveraging AI and like some crazy great platform that we all have uh, access to. Um, I wasn't. It was a thumb and the screen. Um, and, and I hate to say that, but I feel like that's something that a lot of us probably find ourselves into. 
as far as the time, you, you have to make the conscious uh, effort. You have to make the conscious decision that that's where I'm going to invest my time. That is where I'm going to be. And it's hard to do because we all have other things. As the Sergeant Major of the Army, uh, his public affairs team is one. I'm, media engagements, speeches, social media, photography, community relations, uh, inter, uh, meeting prep, meeting exams. It's one person who is kind of doing a lot of this stuff. So you have to say, OK, here's the things that I'm going to do, and here's the things I'm not going to do. And it, you know, we never really, before we really kicked off, there was no like well-defined, approved engagement strategy. I said, you know, I, I remember we were walking down the hallway one day. Are you about to play the music? OK. I remember uh, we were walking down the hallway one day, and, and this was right after the Fort Hood report came out. And I stayed up all night reading this report. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, like if we really want to get after the culture, like this is. This tells us everything that we need to know right here. And um, I was, you know, as the senior enlisted leader for the Army, I knew that he felt a certain way about it. And I knew that he was upset. And I knew that he wanted to, to have kind of a leading voice in, in that space. Um, and so I told him, I said, hey, we're going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to engage on this a little differently. It's going to be a little bit more radical. That's the word I use, a little bit more radical than you're probably comfortable with. And he goes, sorry, Nier. All of this is more radical than I'm comfortable with. Um, if I knew how to do social media, if I enjoyed social media, if I was comfortable here, I wouldn't have hired you. And that was that moment where it's like, oh, like kind of label, like, oh, he trusts me. Like I, ha I have that trust. I, I acknowledge the risk that we're gonna. He acknowledges the risk we're gonna take. And you know, it, then it became moments like, hey, uh, Sergeant Major, we have this situation. There's a thing, a little moment on social media. He goes, what did we say? And I go, well, I, I want to use like. Why didn't, why didn't you respond yet? Why didn't you say something? And I'm just like, uh, I, I wanted to ask you. It's like, you can't come ask me every single time. You can't. You have to know, kind of, you have to get this feel for what it is we're trying to achieve, what we want to do. And, and that's kind of, you kind of learn it in progress. And so now that I'm at the end of three years of that, um, you know, I'm, I'm really blessed to be able to come and, and share it. So I wish there was a magic answer. Um, you just got to be present. You got to be the gladiator in the arena. And you're going to get kicked. You're going to get dirt on your face. You're going to get beat up. You're going to lose some. Um, but if you're in there and you're authentic and you're, you know, you're real and you come, are coming from the right, uh, the right mindset, you have a good, clear intent that you're, you can point everything back to, you'll be OK. Oh. Please. Or we can do this again. OK. All the organizers are getting really anxious. It's for tall people. Um, You're tall in your mind. Uh, I wanted to ask about your Reddit AMA. Mm -hmm. um, what made you decide that that was the way to go? And then how do you think it went? Yeah. <clears throat> um, personally, I think it went very well. Um, what made me decide? So I. I was a Redditor in my own time. Um, what I love about that, uh, when I say find your audience, right, uh, Reddit became our audience. The way Reddit is desi uh, designed for those who hopefully not too many of you are unaware, imagine like the old <laughs> message boards like back in the GeoCities era, like the Yahoo-like era of dial-up. Um, they're very much segmented from each other. If you're really into gardening, and landscaping, and all the different species of roses, you're probably never going to see something about the Army on Reddit. These communities are very insulated. And what I love about them is they're very self-policing. So the Army subreddit um, is a very high density audience of soldiers, veterans, future soldiers, um, family members, like the, all those people that we want to communicate with are like kind of living in this little like commune, right? And they self-police. So when you come in there and you're like talking crazy, uh, the the other users will address that. You'll be there's a voting system. You can be like kind of downvoted. You can be blocked. You can be muted. You can be rewarded uh, for for engagement that um, helps improve the community. I think there's a specialist at Fort Bliss who's done like a bone marrow drive, and they've like 
gotten some crazy like 10,000 people get added to the bone marrow registry, and he's done the majority of that through Reddit. Like, so these communities are, you know, again, finding your audience. The audience was in Reddit. And so, you know, how do you kind of make a splash to the AMA that asks me anything is, is just a feature of that platform that, you know, is kind of used to make that splash. That's how you kind of draw a lot of people in, and then they can see engagement back and forth, Q&A kind of style um, engagement. And it allows for more of a long form discussion, like Instagram, the comment section is terrible to have any kind of real discussion in. Twitter, you're limited. Facebook is just like so decentralized, you kind of, it's hard to get everyone into one space on Facebook. So uh, we chose Reddit because of, you know, again, identifying our audience, where were they at? We're going to go to them. Uh, and then that was just kind of some coordination with the moderator team, who I have to give a ton of credit to um, for, uh, you know, kind of helping us out, um, figure out what that would look like, and then uh, just being present. and. Since then, uh, we have built a very consistent presence on Reddit as a platform, and that's how we found things like the, the medical bills, the um, suicidal soldiers. We've worked with CID to like, find like, soldiers using very limited information. Um, the community itself, actually, like this one guy, he was in Eastern Europe uh, on a cop somewhere, and like probably 20 people are combing through the internet and all of his like post history and like looking things up and we were able to kind of figure out where he was at, hand that off to CID um, and you know they were kind of able to validate it and find the soldier and get him help in time. So um, I'm not telling anybody to go start a Reddit account. I'm telling you to find your audience, figure out where they're at and then go engage in those spaces. For us it was Reddit. Sergeant Rainier, we actually got a question online with, his, with the linguistic shift that we've seen, especially in recent years, uh, new slang, changing usage of words, uh, how do you translate the army slash your command's message so that you're meeting the audience where they're at? I think you, it's a great question. Um, there's, a, there's a balance to it, right, of like being authentic to yourself and still kind of finding ways to relate. Nobody wants to be like that. You know, the meme, like, hello, fellow children meme, like the old guy with the skateboard. Um, but I think that, you know, for us specifically, when we're talking about our soldiers, you know, we already have a great speaker. Like, we already have a great, uh, you know, not character, but, you know, the Sergeant Major of the Army is the voice of the 1.1 million total Army officer, enlisted warrant officer. Army civilians, Army families, you know, he's not just the voice of the enlisted. Um, so it, it's, you know, figuring out kind of where you fit in all that, and then you got to be authentic, I think. Um, you can take a little bit of risk, like you saw some of the, the memes that we posted. You can, you know, find this in a, you can find the balance in a way of like, you know, we're going to use this communication method, um, apply our own flavor to it, and then, you know, deliver that to the audience. Back into the crowd. Hi. Okay. Yeah, just turn it on. <clears throat> nope. Give it a second. Now? Yep. All right. Um, can you speak a little bit more about your use of memes? So, for example, the um, Grumpy Bernie one. I, I can't imagine our organization posting it. And then um, with the, the risk of someone who photographed that coming at us and saying, you didn't author we didn't authorize the use of that. Sure. So. Yeah, I, I think some of that kind of goes back to how much risk are you willing. That's why it was on the risk slide. Um, <laughs> it, it, you know, if, if you can point that back at the intent and say, yes, we made these decisions, um, I got it, you probably wouldn't have made that decision, or no, I didn't ask for permission to make that decision, but am I empowered or am I not empowered? Like, am I trusted or am I not trusted? Am I in charge or am I not in charge? Because I can be in charge today and not in charge tomorrow, and then the next day after that, I'm going to wonder if I'm still in charge, and maybe I don't do something that needs to be done. Um, you know, Sergeant Major of the Army says, how do you become the Sergeant Major of the Army? Don't worry about becoming the Sergeant Major of the Army. Like, if you are worried about, well, you know, I don't know, if I do that, maybe, you know, I just interviewed for this job, and maybe I won't, you know, get that job if I make this decision now. Like, you get out, go away. 
Like this is not the online's not the space for you, right? It moves too fast. You know, the it's so fluid. Um, but that trust, you know, you got to earn it every day. Okay, you can't just have the trust and then you're good forever. You really do have to re-earn it every day. And and so when it comes time to to make a withdrawal, um, you know, uh, and say, hey, we're gonna we're gonna put this meme up and. You know, maybe this one's a little fun, and you know, maybe it doesn't, you know, exactly achieve our attempt, but maybe it captures an audience so that the next day I can talk about, um, you know, the new promotion system or the new uh, the fitness test or, you know, um, some other aspect that is related to the intent. Um, then you can, you can kind of say, hey, look at the work in total. Um, if you want to focus on one post, you want to focus on one meme, you want to focus on one time I got it wrong. That's the you can do that. That's easy. Um, but again, kind of that, you know, being present and being uh, engaging in that space, it means you're going to get it wrong sometimes. You're not going to hit home runs every single swing. You might strike out. I would rather strike out swinging than strike out looking. Uh, it's a baseball reference. I can explain that one afterward if you need me to. Um, and so that's just kind of, you know, that is a, maybe it's a personality thing. And so, you know, as a leader, especially for the leaders in the room, knowing kind of who you have on the team and then, you know, knowing kind of what they bring and where their kind of traits are at and kind of knowing what you're setting loose into the wild, um, that's just as valuable as being the one set loose in the wild and not getting too far away from home base. So. Thank you for that, Sergeant Rainier. We have another question that came in. How do you balance everything else with constantly monitoring social media? Do you develop a plan? Maybe it's like a daily, from these hours, I'm going to check social media, or is it just kind of ad hoc? It's ruthless prioritization. Um, there's an interview question for my, that Sergeant Major Grinson asked me. He said, you have uh, two tasks, and they take two hours apiece, and you have three hours. What do you do? And you get, I was like, well, you do, you just kind of start one, you kind of start the other, and you, you know, no, the answer is you figure out which one's more important and you do it, you get it done, and then you start working on the other one and you do the best you can because you only have three hours, right? So when there's a speech, you know, it is kind of looking ahead, seeing, okay, what do we have kind of coming up? Um, he's giving a speech next week. I probably owe him a draft like a few days before so we can iterate. Um, you know, this thing is tomorrow, so I need to make sure he's ready for it. Um, and, you know, it is ruthless prioritization of tasks of what needs to be done, and then you know maybe you you just kind of fill in the gaps where you can on on social media. That's kind of my personality. If you want to plan it out and do that, like have every 15 minutes of your day kind of dedicated to something, go for it. Um, but you know I think the the hard part there is there have been times where you know Monday morning I'll kind of come in and I'll open up the social media pages just to kind of have them open. And you get the comments like, oh, the silence is deafening from the sergeant major of the army. Oh, I hate that one. I hate it so much. It's like, yeah, sorry. I like, had a weekend with my family. And we like, were watching a football game. And like, I got to sleep. Like, I'm really sorry I wasn't here to comment on your whatever drama du jour on social media. Um, <laughs> so it is, it is ruthless prioritization. But it's also, again, like I said earlier, just saying, I'm, here's what I'm going to do. And here's what I'm not going to do. And just being able to draw those lines. Now is such a, an engaging strategy that focuses so much on the interpersonal communication on social media. Would you have this only be one person, i.e. just you doing this? Or would you recommend, not recommend a team of people that all are using this account to comment on stuff? I, I assume there's risks with consistency, vice like how one person reacts versus another. Absolutely. Um, I think a team approach works really well in the listening space. Um, hey, you know, am I am I going crazy? Is this actually important? That's something that you know Twitter is really bad about this because Twitter figures out what you want to see and it like delivers just that to you. So I, there are many times where I'd have to, you know, kind of reach out to different people and be like, hey, I'm seeing a lot of this. Is that actually big or does it just look big because it's like right here? And there are a number of times where something looked really big because it was right here, and it's like, you know, we're that's probably you know. Ah. I can't do anything about that. That's not, you know, that isn't something that requires immediate yeah. attention. So um, specifically to your question, a team approach commenting maybe as an organization could work. But for me, as an individual, like doing kind of executive comms for a singular individual, 
it was easier for us to just kind of keep it between me and him. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you are a unit or an organization or something that kind of represents a more kind of diverse population of experiences or functions or roles, you can probably figure out a, a good team approach on that. Um, but you have to kind of know who you are on social media. Um, it's really, again really easy when it's one person. That's the persona. He's the he's the voice. He's the opinion. You know, when you're an organization, figure out if my organization wasn't <clears throat> an individual, who is that individual? Uh, when I did social media for the 82nd Airborne Division, it was very clear. It was the grad student who could kick your ass in a bar fight. That's who we were. That's who we. That's that was our persona. That's how we kind of viewed the world. Um, we wanted to be uh, reliable, educated, but like tough as nails because we still have to go fight and win the nation's wars. Um, and so that was when you can kind of figure out, okay, who, what is our voice? And it's literally like, you know, age, gender, education level, what do they read? What's their, you know, what's their Spotify playlist look like? Their, you know, what are they watching on Netflix? You know, wh who are their friend groups? Like what activities do they do? Kind of get into that granular detail, and if whoever's managing that account like really kind of understands that, then it, it's going to help you because that helps you develop that authentic voice. Thank you. We have time for one more question, if anyone has one. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. <clears throat> How do you deal with trolls on ah. Facebook and Twitter? Luckily, we don't have a Facebook. We made the conscious decision very early on. We're not doing Facebook. We're just not going to do it. Not, I don't have time. Again, I don't have time. Ruthless prioritization. Didn't support our objectives. I don't have time for this. Um, I don't. We're just not going to do it. Cut it. Um, Instagram. We started it out, and I thought we had built a lot of good, solid ground on Instagram. We had a working relationship with the meme pages. Like They would kind of ask, hey, this doesn't look write this, we're getting a lot of you know, concerns about this, can you give us some background? And then you know, kind of some of those pages kind of found out they didn't want to hear the truth. They like, hey, I'll tell you why we made this decision. They are just like, I don't believe you. And I'm like, well, I, don't, I don't know, do it. So, and that kind of place became a little bit toxic. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I um, started seeing uh, counseling in this assignment for that reason. It was, it was heavy. It was a lot. Um, you know, when you want to make sure you're finding the the kid with the six hundred thirty thousand dollar medical bill and the kid who may not live through the night, you kind of have you have to read every comment, you have to read every DM, um, and those are some really dark places. So, um, you know, figure out where are those environments that you can grow uh, and go in there. And then, like I said, Reddit is very self policing. So when the trolls kind of came into Reddit. Uh, the community would be like, hey, shut up. You don't know anything about this guy. Like, you know, this account helps soldiers. Just shut up. Go away. And that was actually really nice. That was a, a huge kind of turn the corner moment, like one of those moments where you're like, okay, we're doing something right here um, when you have other people kind of carrying the flag for you. Um, I started off this presentation with a little breathing exercise for that reason right there. Um, I had to kind of adapt. They don't teach us here how to deal with that on social media. And that's really, that's a really, really hard thing to figure out in stride. Um, so I did, I got some professional help. I'm perfectly fine saying that. I've learned kind of techniques, um, like the, the breathing thing. Um, and then I don't, I try not to place myself into those types of environments where I know it's going to be toxic unless it's for a very specific reason. Um, so those are kind of some things that I might Maybe it works for you. And with everything here, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm telling you what I did. I'm giving you some examples of how it worked. Uh, take this, apply it through your own filter, through your own lenses. Take what works and just chuck what doesn't. Don't start a Reddit account because Sarah Rainier said Reddit's a great place to be. Just don't do that. That's, that's, that's not how it works. Find, figure out what you want to do, figure out how you're going to get there, and then, and then move out. Operationalize that intent. Uh, and you're in, your intent is going to be different everywhere you go. And we are trusted communication professionals to figure out how to get there. So thank you so much for your time. Um, I think we're in room 112 out there. If there's any other questions, I'll be over there for a few minutes. If there's anything else you want to talk about, um, I really appreciated this, sir. Uh, just everyone, thank you so much for uh, listening to me.
Yes, for, for those who are interested in some follow-up questions, Sergeant Rainier will be in room 112 right behind here uh, if anyone would like to go back there. Sergeant Rainier, before you get off the platform, uh, we would like to present you with a thank you very much certificate and a DINFOS coin on behalf of Colonel McNorton and the Defense Information School. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have about 15 minutes until our next uh, class begins, which is going to be our panel discussion on Pavilion. That will begin at 10:30 back in here. So please.